Hello and welcome fellow coders! You might be wondering, another video about interfaces? Yes, because interfaces in Go are extremely powerful and versatile, and in this tutorial video you will be learning why. So without further ado, let's jump right in. In the last video, we have seen that interfaces can be implemented by structs. This is usually a very common way of explaining interfaces because it is very easy to understand. But interfaces in Go can be implemented by many other types as well. Let's take a counter interface as an example. It only has one function count that returns an integer value. Now let us define a type named word, which is of underlying type string. You can now go ahead and implement a receiver function for word, which simply returns the length of the word. In our main function, let's define a new variable of type word and call the count function on it. If we print out the result, you can see that running the code now returns 10, which is exactly the length of hello world. If we were to define another type called number of type int, we can go ahead and implement the same count function by, for example, returning the number of digits of n. This can easily be done by dividing n by 10 for as long as n is positive. The value of count will be the number of digits of n. This is why we can return it. In our main function, we can now define a variable n of type number and again print out the result of the count function call. See, count now returns 6 for the number 123456. So, as you can see, interfaces can be implemented by other types and not just by structs. But what you cannot do though is define interfaces for basic types like string or int. That is because you are not allowed to write receiver functions for basic types. See, if you try to implement the counter interface for a string receiver, the compiler will not allow it. This is why I had to define my own types word and number in the first place. Okay, now that we have seen that interfaces can basically be implemented by anything, how can we be sure which type actually implements an interface? For that, let's define a describe function which takes a counter as an argument and prints out its type as well as its actual value. In the main function, if we pass w for the word variable and n for the number variable, we would expect two different outputs for the respective values, obviously. But we can also expect them both to have the same type, since they are both implementing the counter interface, right? Well, by running the code you can see that the output actually proves us wrong. Even though both types implement the counter interface, we can see that each variable is still of its respective type word and number. This means that each implementation of an interface does not only store the value, but also keeps its own concrete type. Speaking of keeping its type, in Go there's a very special type of interface, called the empty interface. This is a very unique and powerful type. The empty interface is an interface which has zero methods. The cool part about it is that the empty interface can hold values of every single type. Even basic types like for example a string with the value hello and also an int with the value of 42. This is because every single type implements at least zero methods. Which kind of makes sense, right? What makes the empty interface so powerful is that we can write functions that have the empty interface as an argument and thus accept every single variable as an argument. See, the new describe function now accepts all variables because they are all defined as variables of type empty interface. Running the code now shows us that Go knows the type of every single variable. But something that is particularly interesting is the empty interface is of type and value nil. This shows us the zero value of interfaces, which is nil, the same as for structs, slices and maps. Now, the describe function accepts every single type as an argument, but this brings us to one big problem when using the empty interface. Let's say for instance that the describe function would actually behave differently depending on the type of i. This is something you can easily see by changing the format verb of the print statement from the default value v to d for integer values. This should work just fine for i since it is of type int, right? But what about s and empty? Just like anticipated, the d verb does not work on strings and the empty interface. Now, what if we go ahead and simply make sure that i is always of type int by casting i to int? Well, the compiler doesn't like that. It says that the empty interface cannot be converted to int. Which kind of makes sense, since every type is of type empty interface, so forcing every type to be an integer seems to be wrong. But if we cannot make the variable be an integer by converting it, how can we make sure that this print statement only gets executed for integer types? Well, there are actually two ways we can do that. The first one is by using type assertion. What this means is that we can assert that the variable i is of type int. This statement actually returns two values. First the value of i as an int value and second the boolean value ok showing if the type assertion has worked or not. Let's go ahead and print out if the assertion has worked or not and the value v in its default format. When running the code we can see that for the integer value ok is true, whereas for the string value and the empty interface ok is false. This is exactly what we expected. The type assertion for 42 has worked, whereas for both other values i cannot be asserted to be an integer type. One word of caution though, the compiler does not force you to check if the assertion has worked. So you can actually completely omit the ok variable and the compiler is still happy. But if we go ahead and simply print out the value v and run the code, 
we can see that it panicked, saying that the type conversion has failed. Or more explicitly, interfaces of type string, not int. So by asserting without checking, we again force the compiler to take the argument and make it so that v is an integer value, which, as you can see, does not work for non-integer types. That is why you should always make sure to check if the type assertion is ok. The second way of making sure that the correct type is used is to use the switch statement on the type of i. So instead of asserting that i is of type x, y or z, we can use the type keyword inside the brackets to extract the type of i. Unfortunately, we cannot use an if statement to check if the type is for example an integer. But what we can do is to use the switch statement, which is exactly what the compiler is telling us to do. So let's go ahead and use the switch statement on the type and go over the first case int. This time we can easily use d as the format word, since we can be sure that v is of type int. The same goes for string. If we check the string case, we can use s as the format word, since v is for sure of type string. Now in this example, let's go ahead and print out all other cases in the default format. This will take care of the empty interface. Now it's time to run the code again. See, no panics, nothing. Just correct type assertion. But what is the empty interface good for? Well, in older versions of Go, the empty interface was used to write functions in a kind of generic way, which is still heavily used. But with the release of Go 118, generics have been introduced to the language. And as the name suggests, we are finally able to write real generic functions. This does not mean though that you should replace all your interfaces with generics, please don't, because generics and interfaces have completely different use cases. But if you want to take a closer look into generic programming in Go, I can definitely recommend you a tutorial video by this handsome guy right here. Totally unbiased. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have learned that interfaces in Go are extremely powerful and versatile. And if you want to learn more about Go, please give this one a like and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, keep on coding.